All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. The No Name Nationals is over with, and I've been spending every second of my free time working on the car. So I'm probably parking it for the year. I need to get back on the old 400 build here. If you haven't seen that first video, go check it out. Haven't seen the No Name Nationals video, go check it out. Um, but yeah, let's go to work. Here is where I left this 400 build. It is a stock crank, stock cast crank. You can see the 400 on it there. Uh, stock cast crank, I've got some 440 source. Uh, they're just cheap aftermarket rods. The bolts have been upgraded. They are 7 16 um, And I got some Keith Black pistons. These are 7 16 Um and I got some Keith Black Pistons. These are, I want to say they're 240s. Yeah, there we go. Show you that part number. 240s, there's the information. I'm doing a little bit of checking today. Uh, Ed's machine balanced all this stuff, which is awesome. He's probably, you know, one of the best in the state, if not in the South. Um, but I went ahead and numbered my pistons. I actually lettered them, if you'll see here, a... A, B, C, D, blah, blah, blah. Same thing with my rods. So I just reweighed the total weight of the rods with my little scale instead of doing the big end, little end. I made myself a fixture a while back. Um, technically, I could swap any of these rods on any of these pistons and they're still balanced. But I wanted to try to get it, um, you know, as precise as possible. So I just weighed the rods again. And... I wrote down the piston weights are, are on the piston. So 81.4, you see I just wrote 81.4. I uh, just wanted to match them up. And then there were their totals. So my lightest combination would be 100.5. Uh, heaviest is 102.1. So they are uh, very super close here. And I realize I'm, I'm just doing that um, as the total weight instead of, you know, the big end, little end. Reciprocating weight would be the big end. So you can see some of these had to have more grinding than others where my lightest rod here, I uh, didn't get any grinding on it. It just, it is what it is. So casting defect, whatever. Um, so I've got them matched up like that. In the block, um, these pistons, I just drew a line so you can kind of see the valve reliefs look to be the exact same size, side to side. So they can go in any hole, but I found one of the old school pistons. I don't even remember what kind it was, but you can see the major difference, exhaust side versus intake side of that valve relief. So you, you can't swap it to either side. This one would have more compression. You see that little bit of raised dome, but also having more compression because that valve relief is smaller than that one. If I can zoom out, so. So um, I'm trying to figure out I wanted to check my rod clearance today because I'd like to get these rods on the pistons and the range on the pistons and everything into the block. So I'm doing some of my checking today. I had this engine wrapped up real tight and nice. Uh, light coat of WD-40 on all the surfaces, machine surfaces and such. And I went ahead and wiped off all the rod journals. You see, she's pretty clean. There's a little bit of lint left on there. I'll wipe it off again. Um, but I was going to just take my mic and go through and check each journal now. I don't want to check it on top of the, the holes. You can see where he chamfered those for me. Um, I'll check them just, just opposite of the holes and go down the line. So front would be one. It goes one, two, three, four, et cetera. So I'll get out my caliper and check all those out, write those numbers down. I want to just bring you along for the process. Uh, this engine, it was going to just be a kind of a hot street deal. I'm trying to get 500 horse out of it. And this will be my first one ever stick on a dyno, but I'm really inclined to throw it in this thing just to see what it would do. This has a 408 currently, and this will be a 406. But with this much shorter stroke, this engine will probably have to turn a lot more RPM to match this one. But wouldn't that just be a fun comparison? Let's go to work. There we are. This is our two to three inch and I'm gonna hit her right on number one dead center 
slide her down about, I'll give her a little roll. There we go. Yes, it may be easier to do this on a bench, but Ed has already done this. I just forgot to tell him to write down those measurements for me. So, got her locked. Lift it straight off. And I've got uh, 2.375. Four, two point three seven four four. Got that down. Two point three seven four four. And I'll try her again. This is number one. Move it just slightly. Two point three seven four. Two. Let me jot her down over here. 2.3742. So I don't, my variance was, what is that, two ten thousandths? So I can take the average of those two. I just wanted to have these numbers where if I check this later, you know, in 10 years or whenever, if you pull this motor apart um, and that's checked, wow, you know, or if it ate a bearing up, I can measure that. Uh, journal again and kind of have a good reference especially since i'm putting on it's on this video so i don't actually have to keep this sheet of paper i'll see this sheet of paper if i just look my video up let's go so i've got my dial bore out here you can see this in action i got it uh set up to my mic and my mic is set up to the tighter 2.3745 um, and then I got two, two rods that are, uh, torqued down. So they do have the correct ARP lube and they're torqued to 63 foot pounds. And I was going to show you how I check these, uh, with my two shells in obviously. And I just brought it over here so we can kind of get a better look at this stuff. But this was the lighter rod. You remember that one in the bunch that did not get... Uh, any grinding on it because it was just the way it was sold and cast. I got these rods and pistons from a buddy of mine for a super great deal. So this this whole engine all together, uh, I'll get you a final price on it, but it's going to be way less than you would ever imagine. Uh, so let me drop my gauge in. I'm going to set my camera up where I don't, I'll have minimal scratching. There will be some. You can see that little bit of scratching there where it drops in. You can't feel it with your finger or anything like that, but it does take a little bit of that coating off. You can see some's even stained and gone there, but let me show you what it looks okay. like. Okay, so watching our needle as I rock it, it's going away from zero, going away from zero. So we are looking at one, two, three, four, five, five tick marks. So that is pushing right up on two and a half thousandths. If I can get it closer there. Maybe just a hair under two and a half thousandths. And the spec is half a thousandths to uh, almost three thousandths. So Wayne and uh, rather Ed and Wayne gave me four thumbs up when I called and told them that. That was rod F we just checked. We're going to check rod C just because that's how I had them labeled. Get you up close. Ninety degrees from our parting line, and just over two thousandths. Can you see it? So that's four marks or four half thousandths equals two thousand. So within spec, it looks really good. I'd like for all these to be over two. Uh, between two and three, I'm tickled. And we're gonna get her put together after I get these others checked so out. There is a reason I'm not checking my uh, rod bores here without bearings. 
Ed did check them all and he explained to me there were a couple that were tight that he had to open up just a little bit. So he assures me they're all in spec. I trust that. My bearings are turning out nicely. I think what I'd like to do, because I'm my next steps are going to be to assemble rods, get the pistons on the or the rings on the pistons, and getting it all ready to uh, put into the block. I want to get her flipped over and check some piston ring clearance in each cylinder. Here are my piston rings that came with the pistons and the look just to be some cast iron. Uh, that says Molly on it, plasma Molly. There's our bore size, 4.372. What I was gonna do is just mic my piston. You can see in the skirts, they got the little marks there. So I can multiply this correctly. Since these are hyper eutetic, here's our chart, if you need to see it. I'm going to drag gasoline. Uh, seven and a half thousandths. So it gives us a range over there. Um, we'll be in that range, I'm sure. So top ring, seven and a half thousand. Second ring, if you flip them on over, it says uh, that's for the top. So second ring, four thousandths per inch of bore minimum. Boosted is five thousandths. So I'll, f I'll figure what it comes out to and see if I need to open it up any. I thought about going four and a half thousandths there just to have a little bit extra. This engine won't be boosted by any means, but um, that one over there in the corner will be with that Chinese turbo I have sitting on the table. So that'll be a different engine. This is naturally aspirated or maybe with a little nitrous, I guess. I got some on this car now. Anyway, um, let me get to measuring this piston and I'll show you what it comes out to. And she looks pretty close. Maybe with a two instead of a three. Okay, so I convoluted this process enough. There was my piston measurement. I add four and a half thousandths. Uh, that gets me to a little over 4.372. But what I should have just done, I went to... 4.342, add 30 thousandths to it. And that's where I got that 4.372. That top ring gap needs to be 33 thousandths. Bottom can be uh, 18, 17 to 18. A little bit more wouldn't scare me, but uh, I do have the top ring dropped in right now. And I lowered her down with my piston, as I always do. And you can see that feeler fall right in very snugly. And that is, yeah, she's hard to read. That's 20 thousandths. So I'm going to have to file some rings, which sucks, but that's part of building an engine. So I'll get those ring files, top gap. Um, I'll go ahead and check my second. I want to pull this one out first because I don't like to have more than one set out at, at a time to confuse top and bottom and all that. Layer back here. This is our second ring. If it's 20 thousandths, we're in the ballpark. I did not see a mark on it earlier. Oh, there's a dot. See it? Dots usually go up, which would put our chamfer of the ring down so as it's scraping it's pulling like that get her dropped in here kind of hard to do with one finger not so bad get our fancy piston ring dropping device there we go i like to have those lined up pull her out Let's try my 20 thou, see what she does. Oh yes. I think we're in the ballpark right there. 20 fits nice and snug. So I bet you these were not file to fit rings. They were just standard rings you could throw in. If those were not hyper eutetic pistons, um, they'd probably be good. Um, 
from bore to bore, I've shown you that before. If you drop that ring in this cylinder, you can check it with a feeler gauge, test it out. And uh, in our situation, they're not going to be much tighter at all unless there's a variance in the ring manufacturer because Ed did these cylinders and did this block, so they are dead nuts, super accurate. I can, I can double check them, but I'm going to go uh, cylinder by cylinder and do my rings, and that part of the build will be done. So to review for the day, I matched up my rods and my pistons weight-wise. I check my piston ring end gaps, which I'm going to need to file. I check my rod clearance um, to the journal itself. So we measured our journals, check the rod clearance. For the most part, uh, this dude is ready to start assembling. I can show you the, which Ed actually floated these for me. So you can see the hole there. Uh, they are full float. So he used the pins from this kit uh, so I shouldn't have any issue there. I can double check them before I try to slide them in to see if there's any, um, drag at all. But there's not going to be, um, yeah. So basically she's ready to build. We can check our rod side clearance after they're together and keep pushing forward. So next time y'all see this engine, I'll be slapping some pistons in her. Thank y'all for watching. I'll catch you next time.